Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always watch our recordings um, in our archives at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show uh, where to get into all of our recordings. Both the live show and our uh, archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For so those of you not here from Nebraska or not watching us from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is a state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all types of libraries. So you will find things on our website and on our show topics that are for uh, publics, academics, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, anything and everything. Really our only criteria is that it is something to do with a library or with libraries, uh, something that libraries are doing, something uh, cool resources we think they might find beneficial. Um, we bring in guest presenters from across the country to talk about what they're doing in their libraries or in their organizations. Um, we have Nebraska Library, Library Commission staff come in and talk about things that we offer here through the Library Commission. Um, and we also bring in guest speakers from around our state. And um, that's what we have this morning with us. And one of our speakers has walked away again. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're fine. Everybody's on note. So today what we're talking about is uh, Nebraska libraries in the time of COVID, COVID-19, planning for reopening. Um, and the one person who walked away is actually, they're open for the first time today. So yes. he may be in and out as needed. <laughs> um, what I wanted to do today, I invited some um, library staff from um, a couple of places in Nebraska to talk about what they've been doing, um, how they have already been open. Some, as I said, the other one library opening just today and some um, help they've had from some of our library systems. So we have a group of people here today that are going to talk about that. Uh, we have with us today Denise Harders, who is, wave Denise. And, <laughs> yeah. Other hand. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> she is the director of our Central Plains Library System. Uh, for those of you not in from Nebraska, which I think right now um, everybody is, but if you're watching this recording, we have regional library systems in Nebraska. They may not work the same way you think of in your state. They are not like um, where you join the, the system and everybody is a, is a group. They are, um, I more think of them as an offshoot of their, of their, they're part of the Nebraska Library Commission. They are our uh, people on the ground, so to speak. Um, four different regions in the state uh, where they go around and do training and consulting and help libraries um, do a lot of the visiting for us to the libraries. So she's more of a support system, I would say, for the libraries. Uh, we also have Cecilia Lawrence, who's the director of the North Platte Public Library. Good morning, Cecilia. They've been open, when did you first open? May 11th. May 11th, yep. So they've been open for a little bit, so she has some experience. She's going to talk about that. Also with us, and it's just back, perfect timing, Steve. Uh, Steve Vosselman the director of our Grand Island Public Library, who is just opening officially to the public today. Today? Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, so hopefully everything will be fine over the next hour, at least. <laughs> um, uh, also with us is uh, Celine Swan, who is also from Grand Island Public Library, the services librarian there, who has been very helpful to Steve with this. So she's going to talk about what they've been doing there. Uh, what I want to talk about show first here is um, across the country, uh, we are still in the throes of the um, pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but communities and um, organizations, uh, municipalities and libraries, as of who we are concerned with here, um, are working on opening up some. It's there is no standard across the board. Um, everybody is going to be doing it and is doing it on their own time space, timeline um, in their own way. Uh, but it is something that is happening in some areas. Some are not opening at all. Um, it all you know varies. Here at the Library Commission, we've been trying to help our libraries out with this by um, gathering resources for them. Um, we have here on our website, there's a list that we've been trying to keep up to date 
of libraries first started out in about mid-March when everything first shut down of libraries that were closing and how what was happening. Uh, we just kept an eye on social media and news items and things and um, we actually put out a web Google form that's still out there where libraries could let us know just trying to keep track and, and, and gather in one place what's happening at Nebraska libraries. So it's more about when who was closed, what they were doing, if they were doing things like making special accommodations like the um, Wi-Fi in the parking lot, things like that, whatever um, the, the, the bare minimum they were doing in the beginning. So we um, have this here. We have now added it, uh, updated it to be also reopenings. Now that is happening at some of our libraries. So if libraries do let us know what they're doing or we just see on, um, like I said, social media or in the news what's happening, we try and keep this up to date as much as we can. So if you're interested in what's happening at a library or if you're at a library, check this list. Um, if your library is on there, make sure it's correct for us, please. Um, if it isn't, give, shoot us an email here to our reference desk and they'll make sure we have the correct info up there on the list. List. We also have uh, pinned to the top of our website this uh, COVID-19 and pandemic resources for libraries uh, blog post, which has the link to the web form that people could use to let us know what's going on. Um, we have a couple of interactive active maps that Sam Shaw, our data guy, has put together about libraries that were offering modified service and Wi-Fi outside of their libraries available. So this is just based on the information we gathered from them. So um, if you wanted to know if people did have it, um, if we just want the yeses, the places that you can go and use the Wi-Fi out in the parking lot, based on the information we've gathered. Um, we'll get back to that. Uh, we also have our sub page here for all of our pandemic resources that we've gathered. And you'll see here there's things for not just for libraries, but for anyone in other situations. What do I do with my kids? What about applying for unemployment? How do I teach my kids at home? And our thinking on this was, this is the kind of questions that people have always come to the library about potentially. Like I need information on something and how do I how do I apply for unemployment? How do I, you know, work with do this with my business related to it? So to help our libraries be able to support their users in whether they're open or not, we have a lot of links here and information on them. There's a specific section just for libraries, of course. We've tried to gather lots of information here, and this is um, updated regularly when we hear of new um, studies that have been done or uh, webinars available or information from ALA or IMLS or the CDC, whoever, we try and keep this up to date here. Um, we had information about closings, um, help for reopening your library, and we're gonna talk about the Realm Project, great thing being done by OCLC and IMLS to actually study what's going on with library materials. Um, if you are were thinking about holding, how are you going to hold your board meetings or any other public meetings? The governor in Nebraska did give um, a, a, a special order to allow um, organizations who do have to do public meetings and meet the, uh, the Public Meetings Open Meetings Act be able to do it remotely via teleconference, Zoom, whatever. And that was extended through June 30th. It did orig um, originally. Um, was ended in May, I think, but it's been extended. I don't know where we're at now. I suppose we should double check that now that's July, but there is, even if his order of saying that does expire, there is actually already in the Open Meetings Act, this is here for here in Nebraska for anyone who's wondering, there is a um, section that does say you can do your meetings virtually. Um, it's already been a thing, so his his was just being a little more forceful, I think, with it. That definitely, it's okay <laughs> to because of what's happening and places can't be open and people can't be near each other. Um, that's okay, but it is actually already in the Open Meetings Act itself that you can have um, video conference meetings or whatever technology you want to use. Information about some other policies that some libraries have put up. Um, so we shared them there. Um, we've got North Platte and um, Grand Islands is on there. Just got yours on there this morning that you sent to me, Steve. So um, if you want to use them as examples for yours. Summer reading program options, lots of things going online with that. Um, here in Nebraska, we did do a statewide, and we still have it ongoing, um, Reader Zone uh, statewide subscription to that. Any public library in Nebraska can sign up for that. So if you are still doing your summer reading or going to maybe continue something with that, that is something to look into. I know there's other resources out there too. Um, and then just some more resources from um, other health, education, teaching education, online resources. So as much as we could get here on the page. 
um, always being an updated, um, like I said, as much as we can with um, and if we hear something new or find something new and useful for a library. So Nebraska Libraries, take a look at that, keep an eye on it. <clears throat> if you're not from Nebraska, see what your state library is doing or your state library association. They may have um, similar kind of resources out there for you. Um, you can see a lot of our things here are general for anybody, but some specific to Nebraska. So. <clears throat> So what I want to talk, do first is ha, um, Denise, have Denise talk about first is um, she's Central Plains Library System, as I said, and uh, she has been doing weekly Zoom calls, Zoom meetings with library directors. And so uh, Denise, I wanted to have you talk about how, because I know that's how some of you guys, all of you here on the call today, and make up, I'm sure some of you who are on listening, um, ended up talking to each other and, and um, you know, uh, just chatting about things. So how did that all get started and how did you, um, you know, how's that all going? Yeah, I I would love to take credit, but <laughs> I I really can't. I I got an email at first and then a phone call because I, I made a follow-up phone call to Lori out in COZAD at Wilson Public Library. And she said, I I'm at a loss. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what other libraries are doing. My mm -hmm. board, my city are asking me questions. Can you help me figure out what's going on at the other libraries around? And I, I thought about it and I, I said, yeah, we can, we can figure out what's going on with other libraries. We just got to ask. And so um, I didn't have a Zoom membership, but they offered a free one. And I did a, I do use a telephone conference calling company. Mm. And so the first one, I think we even used that telephone conference call, which is very difficult, even more difficult than Zoom, mm. um, because you can't see who's talking and you don't know what, who's going to be talking and you talk over each other. So that was difficult. Mm. So then the next time I said, let's do the Zoom thing. I don't know anything about it, but we'll learn. So mm. we did. Everybody's and, learning it. <laughs> yeah. Consequently, I now have a Zoom membership because you, they cut you off after 40 minutes. And I'm right. telling you, we had more than 40 minutes worth of stuff to say. Mm -hmm. So that's how it, it first got started is just a question as comes into my office on a regular basis. I get phone calls, I get emails. People say, What do you think? And that's that's how the reader zone thing happened too, by the way. I had a call from a library. So what do you think? So the crazy stuff happens. But so our first talks, we talked about what was just going on. People just needed to know, like Lori said, I don't know what to do. And I, my board is looking at me like I do know something. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's, it's a cliche now, but this is unprecedented. Nobody has, there was no, I mean, in, in library plans, and we talk about this in our strategic planning and things, there is disaster planning that you go through mm -hmm. or that you should have somewhere in your plan, your community, your municipality has it. I don't know if this particular situation was was in there. <laughs> um, it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not that I saw. thought of. It will be now, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. right. But there was nothing to base. What do we do? Yeah. Right. So that's, you know, we talked about you need to talk to your library board. You need to talk to your city administration and you need to talk to the local health department. Who knew that they, they were going to be the ones who really were leading the charge here? So that was one conversation. Another one we talked about, what are you going to do with summer reading? I At that point, that we were it was early enough on. Art, Some yeah. of us were still thinking maybe maybe we can do something but as we know that all went down the tubes but we had to come up with something different so that's what we wanted to talk about is is what should we do about summer reading should we try and at least have something mm -hmm. um, another conversation was how to keep your staff working what they can do inside the library when you're closed because you know a lot of the general population thinks the only thing we can do is ha serve them. So there's no reason to be inside yeah. the library if it's closed. You're waiting for them to show up to give us something to do. Yeah, to check out. Right, right. <laughs> so, but the, so we, I, 
we talked about all the different things that library staff can do when the library's closed. And also some people needed to stay at home. So what kinds of things could you send home with them to work on so that they could continue to get paid um, during this time when everybody kind of needed their paycheck? So that was another conversation. Um, one time we talked about morale because this was the middle boy we were slogging through the middle i'm telling you the the mental health of mm -hmm. of our staff and how and ourselves and how we could keep going and be positive and keep some, the morale up and running mm -hmm. and then really practical things like where do you buy some cleaning supplies what cleaning supplies should we buy and how do we get our hands on them because you can't find a sanitizing wipe to save your soul in this state i'm telling you there are they're just not out there and then we had changing guidelines coming you know we're doing phase one okay and then we did phase two almost everybody did phase two but not, not steve he couldn't do phase two when everybody else did <laughs> his grand island was always somebody different and then you know then we moved to phase three what are we going to do with phase three and so those were that was a conversation one day is okay the phases are a change in mm -hmm. um what and what does looking at that study from realm the the reopening one the the national study that was done to figure out what we do with our library material once we do reopen how do we keep it safe and clean and not wreck it by spraying bleach on it every time it comes back and don't microwave what, it no don't microwave don't it and so all of the things that we have to figure out and so there was some actual good solid scientific research done and mm -hmm. they did it fairly quickly and there's it's ongoing and so that those are things we talked about is is to know what to do with the stuff that we get back from the public, which, you know, when you think about it, I have stood at the front desk and gotten some really ugly stuff back, not even a pandemic mm -hmm. thing. Just, oh. you know, That's the what thing do you do with it? This is something that yeah. libraries have been dealing with from the, the beginning of libraries that yeah. you guys can all speak to this. People bring back things in terrible condition. With oh, yeah. Unknown, um, substances on them mm -hmm. um bed bugs that's a huge thing you know bugs oh, that's always a good one you know, thing. It's, 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 it's already been a thing that we've had to deal right. with in the past so right. um i think some people were surprised that libraries were like well but what we were all just you know i think it was just common sense okay so how do we take care of this because we've been taking care of all these other situations in the past what do you mean people do that to their books oh you have no idea what people do you have no <laughs> the materials idea. and how they come back yes yeah. So, you know, that was a conversation that, that I thought was important and, and everybody joined in on. It was really terrific. Mm -hmm. um, then we've had our reopening plans because everybody starts out with a plan. And then we have the reopening that happens, which is Steve is in the middle of right now. You know, you, you have your plan, but do you, what, what really happens when you open the door? Mm -hmm. So, so we've had a couple of conversations about experiences so mm -hmm. that we can, everybody can learn from each other. And then I we're think great about what you guys have done. This has been a weekly thing that you've been doing, right? Every Thursday you right. have. Yeah. So right. um, like you said, things changed almost day to day sometimes with this, that we know we what, it, how it was, what, it, what it was all about, what COVID was like, and then you wait tomorrow. No, it's different. Or our municipality wants us to do this or our governor wants us to do that but then the next day the, the mayor some, wants something different it's changing so quickly i think i think gathering those people together to talk has been a great thing that you you've done to just make sure everyone just can keep communicating i know all of you have mentioned that that's been a really i think you said a lifesaver to you <laughs> well and and one of the last things that we talked about last week was the budgeting is happening so we're looking forward Time. You know, not only are, have we're looking at where we are right now, but we're trying to look forward. So yes, that's what I was just going to say is we did the weekly meetings and that allowed people to, to share 
the knowledge that they've gained because that's what we do experiences um a little bit of venting maybe we had a teeny bit of venting on occasion that's um, part of mental health keeping up your mental health definitely <laughs> it is about retirement ask my husband we, i did try and talk people out of retirement yes <laughs> and um we learned a lot from each other even it, it even the people who were in the throes of it all learned from the people asking questions saying hey what do we do and they i hadn't thought of that so exactly. that was a great Maybe thing you think about so the more people you can have as your network or your community in that situation is is helpful yeah well and the and the what i heard the most was i'm not alone i'm mm -hmm. not alone and one week i had a meeting that i that i did not schedule but i had to attend and so i i let this group know a week ahead of time said hey i can't be here next thursday we'll we'll catch up on the next one and oh my goodness i got a lot of phone calls a lot of emails mm -hmm. saying we we got to get together <laughs> and i said we will thursday we'll be there thursday <laughs> so yeah it, it really was missed when it wasn't there and so and i truly and honestly had no idea because there were times throughout this that i thought well maybe they're tired of talking to each other maybe we should go to every other week or you know but no no we we just keep going because mm -hmm. they're like you say it changes day by day so that's what our plan is right now <clears throat> is to keep on going mm -hmm. Well, I think that's great. And I'm sure people will keep attending and this might just become a regular thing for anything. As long as you can keep it up every week, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, and we've had truthfully 25 to 45 people yeah. every week. And that for our small system, I mean, we, we have a huge geographic system, which is part of my struggle with getting people together in person is we have yeah, all those green counties hmm. and so it's it's a lot of miles but this has made me really learn about the possibilities of zoom and all of that because it, it has been important to get together and it has been every week and i'm it's been very well followed like i say i can't say that other than summer reading meetings where you learn about summer reading and get your, all your ideas. I haven't had that many people respond yeah. to anything else I've done. That's awesome. Well, I hope you do keep doing it, definitely. Um, so, uh, Cecilia, let's talk to you next because you have been open. So, um, uh, how did uh, you get? Uh, I know it wasn't your decision. <laughs> um how did you um end up becoming uh, what were you planning and what happened and as you said you sent me something that will show too you can let me know when you show that that things don't always go as you maybe thought they would have as denise mentioned no in those early days um we were like many libraries we were like working on curbside i mean i think we spent 80 hours just focused mm -hmm. on curbside and north Platte got a new city administrator and he said no you are going to open, throw your curbside plans away. Mm -hmm. And so that really threw us, that was on Friday and we had to reopen Monday. And we quickly I had- time to plan. Uh, no. <laughs> and so um, it threw us into a very focused, um, looking at so many different aspects of reopening. And uh, it, one of the things when, Denise started all this is there were little libraries that had stayed open during this the pandemic mm -hmm. because they had zero cases in their county. And I will say that North Platte has followed the governor's recommendations for his phases. Phase one, we moved, started on May 11th. Phase two is June uh, 1st. And then phase three, he, he did June 22nd. We went with July 1st for our changes. So we have progressively loosened. And I will stress every library is different. So that that comes out of the the uh, systems meetings as well. But everybody takes away good suggestions. And both Steve and I applaud the little libraries that stayed open. Um, the smaller libraries, they were so vital to their communities to keep going. 
-hmm. And then as cases did start showing up in their communities, they had some things that we were sharing back and forth about how to operate. Um, so some of the things that we had to consider in the very first round when we opened up phase one was mask requirements of staff, mask requirements of the public. Um, we had to take all of our cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes, sprays, Lysol spray, anything that we had that was a disinfectant, we took everything and put it all in one area because they were scattered all over the building and we really didn't know what we had. So we went ahead and put it all in one place and it gave us a really good gauge when we were getting really low and needed to find some other resources. Um, one of our other things that we spent a lot of time on in the beginning was how do you make your automated library system, your ILS, how do you make it work for you? Are you going to waive fines? How are you going to push people's their their due dates forward into the future? Um, are you going to keep your book drop open? How are you going to handle uh, returns and that realm study in the early days when we reopened there was nothing out from realm yet they had just announced it and um, everything that we read and we did a lot of reading had to do with three days seemed to be the length of time that the virus lived on plastic and we most of our books are wrapped in that plastic, plastic so covers, we were, yeah Yep, so we went with the 72 hours. Um, we added a light spring of a medical disinfectant. Um, a lot of people can't get a hold of it. We I found a medical supply company and ordered four gallons of it. We're still on our first gallon because it is such, you use so little of it. And mm -hmm. of course the realm study is based on just letting things sit with nothing on them whatsoever. So that, you know, it gives us a little, makes us feel a little bit better but um, just sitting, um, we'll, we'll get those books in a safe status. And that's so important. I actually did a Facebook post on, is it safe to use your public library? Because our numbers, when we first reopened, I mean, we had expected them to be low. I really did. I expected them to be about 25%, and they didn't hit 25% until about three weeks in. Um, we're still unsure. I mean, even if you are open, they still don't know, but is it safe? Is it, you know, what is the library doing to protect me? What are other people doing to protect me and themselves? And what is my personal situation? Do I have extenuating circumstances of my own that I need to figure out how to deal with? Right. Um, but when you throw your books in quarantine, you got to remember that you've got to add a grace period or extend due dates or not charge fines or check them in exempt. So we had to work through all of those uh, procedures um, to, to help people out. And when we went to phase two, we actually stopped moving due dates forward and started implementing fines. And we had hundreds of overdue notices that we sent out. But, it, and I'm, you know, we debated about sending them and I'm glad we did because I had so many people say, I don't get the newspaper, I don't do social media. They had no idea we were open, even though there's big signs on the front windows. Um, it and was like, the, here's your, the, you get the blog post that the post that you did at the end of June about um, new changes coming July 1st. That's pretty in your face. But if you're not on social media or something, no, you wouldn't know. Exactly. So um, we've always during this time, and I think most libraries have really leaned to the benefit of their patron, you know, in waiving fines. Certainly it's extenuating circumstances. And that first few days that we opened, they were quirky. Um, we didn't have a lot of people in the building, which was good. But on the third day that we were open, we had a guy trying to access pornography, which we are a filtered library. That was a community decision to filter. And so, I mean, it's like really, you know, we're dealing with everything else and you're going to hassle us. That's about your that. most important thing that you came here to, to do during yes. a pandemic is that. Yes. Um, we've had people, believe they don't believe that the coronavirus is real mm -hmm. they have coughed on money deliberately um you know not i mean it's just like like a couple a handful of people that have had this or they're disparaging about you're not wearing your mask correctly to our staff who up until phase three were required to wear masks um that dropped um recently and then that immediately got challenged on facebook why are you dropping the requirement because it's a perceived level of safe 
when you walk into a medical facility, into a business, into a library, and everybody is masked. The mm -hmm. people who are walking in believe that it's a safe facility because you're all wearing masks, so they don't have to. And but that, Cecilia, I love that. I love the guy that took the dime out of his mouth to pay yeah. for his copy. That was yeah. a good one. That was just even not in a pandemic no no exactly um, no no, you know, no money coming out of your socks or your no and um you know steve has the same issue today and the reason he was having part of an empty chair we had a petitioner on day one and he does too um mm -hmm. there and it's like of all days and i've got to dig through my files i bet steve's like me we haven't had petitioner problems in probably three years and I had to dig through and find what our ordinance said, what our policy said, and go take care of it because I, I was just like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" You know. And staff is nervous. Um, my one of my big suggestions to Celine uh, for for your reopening day is have food for the staff. We um, do, we do good. today. Yes. Good because they are Lots stressed. The yep. first day is the worst, and you get through today and it'll get better and by day three it feels like the new normal because it's so much slower we you prepare for business to come back in droves the way you're expecting the lines around the block and i'll be curious to hear from steve and celine tomorrow how, how if they had lines around the block um that was not our experience but i'm sure some library somewhere probably did um it may depend on when you open up too you opened up way early as way early from as far as I would describe it yeah. when people were still yes everything locked down don't go anywhere without a mask I mean in May that would that was like the throes of do not go anywhere and restaurants yeah. weren't open things like that um, we had we had 10 people we had 10 people in two cars drive here from Denver because we were the closest library that was open to them they were refugees and they needed to print out citizenship green card type paperwork, oh, wow. governmental paperwork. Mm -hmm. And they needed to find some place that had a, a connection to a computer that they could print from. That was day one. That was one of our- libraries are there for, yeah. That, that's what we've been struggling with, yeah. Yeah. Um, other things we had to do, we chose to implement age restrictions because we just could not see how kids could social distance. Here we are eight weeks later, and we are dropping our age restrictions. Um, it's 10 o'clock. We haven't had any moms with kids in the library yet. But I, by this afternoon, I'm anticipating that we will see a few. I don't think we're going to see a lot because Facebook, I see it both ways. I've had um, somebody talk about privately, they private messaged me and they're like, are you going to uh, uh, allow the kids in and you're not wearing masks and I'm a grandma, I'm not bringing my kids in. That's and fine. on the other end, moms and parents are just like, we're so excited. My child can't just wait to come in and pick out his own books. So you've mm -hmm. got both ends of the spectrums of parenting and grandparenting out there that they're struggling to know what to do. Most are staying home. This has been my experience so far. Um, one of the things that we also looked at in the beginning was hours for vulnerable populations. So our first hour of the day, was was really kind of set aside for that population. It wasn't used very much, and here we are in phase three, and now we're just open our straight Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, our hours were set by our new city administrator, and we will not be getting Saturday hours back, probably for at least one year, possibly two. And evening hours are off the table unless, we can be open nine hours a day. So we choose what nine hours and um that that that's coming down for budget reasons so that's mm -hmm. been heavy on my mind as as our budgets as we're working through those um uh, as you go on it it does get better um the quest for for hand sanitizer you can find it is wipes the wipes you cannot like Denise said, you can't find a wipe to save your life. We are, we, I've got a staff member, her mission this week is to create the DIY wipes. She's trying several different models. Mm -hmm. um, she's seen a lot of those online way back in the beginning. Yeah, the ways to yeah. do that with paper towels and your own things, yeah. So we're, we are definitely playing around with that um, a little bit. And um, um, Krista, can you show them the one spreadsheet that I put together? Yeah. Um, um, over here. 
one of the things that I did both for my purposes and for, I did this for another um, librarian in our system because they were like, can I see how you're walking through this? So you've kind of got the questions on the left-hand side and, and then going across the top goes through the different phases. So it's like closed with staff reporting, Thanks. book drop only. And I would always say, please open your book drop a week or two before you um, open to the public because you want to get the material coming back in um, before you reopen. Um, curbside, that for us, that whole option got stripped. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doors open, but, and I told Krista, I said, oh my gosh, this isn't even right because it, it, I needed to go back in and change and update it with all sorts of information. So, um, well, that's, if that's what you're saying before things are going to change. You're going to come up with a plan and yeah. I think part of library planning in general and disaster planning, you'll have a plan of what you can work with, but be flexible with something's going to come up that's going to make it go totally out the door or some part of it's going to not do what you think it was going to happen and you have to do a 180 and figure out something different yeah um you know we we looked at all different aspects the, the whole mask thing it's a it's a big deal and i was really um interested in what happened to the city of grand island with the governor in this phase three because they were going to require their employees and the public to wear masks to come into a municipality, municipal government building. And then the governor said, we're gonna pull, you're not eligible for any coronavirus uh, financial There's assistance. Funding from the, from the governor's office you're not eligible for if you require that people wear masks, yes. And that is huge for them to be able to request that assistance we've tracked it we've already because we we made 3d masks for um mm -hmm. our our hospital um we i mean our cost is over, it's already over a thousand dollars because we kept we had to buy filament more lamination mm -hmm. pouches um in addition to whatever cleaning supplies you can find which their prices are increased uh for sure so it, it's definitely it makes you really look at this from many, many different aspects of um, uh, your library. And um, going to phase three for us, I I'm hoping that our numbers will come back, but it's it's still, we, we are not even at 50% yet. We are still hovering 25 to 35% of yeah. our norm from a year ago. And I don't, I, I don't know that that will change much. Like you said, people are still unsure, scared because we are, we are still in the, in the height of this. This is even though um, here in Nebraska and in other states, um, they are going through reopening and you know phase whatever one, two, three, and making things more open. Nothing has changed with the virus itself. It's still out there, full blast. There's no cure, no vaccine. Um, we're still not even sure where it all is sometimes. So we're still, you know, in the middle of this. So there are still going to be. You're, I don't think libraries' numbers are going to go back to normal next year. Maybe when we do know more, when thing there is something, I don't know. Um, it definitely will affect us budgetarily. I mean, we're only open five, 45 hours a week as opposed to formerly 66. Yeah. That is not going to change. And we started our budget process with a minimum 10% budget cut. And that's the thing too, a lot, a lot of means because people aren't out spending money, sales tax income, it's all down. Yeah, everybody is yeah. gonna have to deal with that too, yeah. Um, but it's across the board everywhere. It's not like there's gonna be libraries who are saying, oh, everything's fine, we're totally, you have all the same people, and no. <laughs> Probably the best thing that has come out of this is the fact that we've said for years we really needed to get more active online as far as like story time and other events that are going on um, with whatever it is crafts and things like that and we've never done it we've never done it we've never done it guess what we're doing it and I don't everybody's know doing it and it works and it's fun and I think interactive. they like actually it. have a, a good following of about 200 people whereas normally the numbers that came into the facility were probably closer to 60 to 75 so we actually are getting a bigger audience um that statistics need to be tracking I I one of my questions for different now yeah 
one of my questions for the library commission I was going to talk to Rod about was I want to see if we can somehow add social media something off of the dashboard on Facebook into our statistics yeah yeah mm -hmm. so yeah because that is definitely an audience that we are hitting um, so it, it's been a real interesting I've always said I never wanted to be a beta tester for any ILS product and I feel you, like we were a beta for this then, yeah. <laughs> and um, okay. it's been a good experience but, for the most part so yeah one of my my favorite things that happened during the meetings we had is we could laugh we could laugh some and one of the best laughs we got was it was early on you were the only one and you said here comes this gentleman in the library and he has his mask on and pretty soon he obviously needs to sneeze and he reaches up and grabs the mask and pulls it down and sneezes and then puts it back so <laughs> typical of the public i mean yeah it you just never know what you're gonna see in the library. Think, yeah what do, how do i do yeah <laughs> All right. Um, thanks. So I just want to remind everybody, if anyone out there, if you have any questions for anybody here, type into the questions section. If you have your own ideas or things you've done at your library, um, share. We can I can read off what your situation has been, how you dealt with the same things. If you have any tips, tricks, ideas um, of, of what you've done, um, go ahead and share it. Or if you want to ask anyone here or just ask the audience in general that they can answer back as well, what have you done in whatever situation, go ahead and get it typed in there. So let's go on to Steve and Celine now in um, Grand Island. Um, where did I get your, there's your website. <laughs> um, who are opening today. Congratulations. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I have um, I have the camera system on my computer, and I have everything all worked out. So every once in a while, I can see um, how things are going, how the petition demonstrators are doing, uh, whether they're still in the shade, uh, or if if they took my suggestion so that they wouldn't be um, in the way of people, and and so we'll we'll see how that goes. One thing I was reminded of, and I'll make sure I share this on Thursday, Denise and Cecilia, is, um, well, I've been the one that's been talking about retirement. That was my discussion. You now, Cecilia's got many years ahead of her. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm were talking about this before any of this happened. This is yeah, not I in retirement. Retire now, last December would have been a good time to, to retire, <laughs> but um, I am going to be retiring soon. And so for many months now, Celine, our youth services librarian, uh, she's been, you know, following along with many different aspects of library administration. And I'm, I'm going to be asking that she be named the interim director when I retire. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've learned so, a lot the last few months. <laughs> yes. One thing that I was reminded of is, is COVID-19 the worst thing that ever happened to me in my career? And I can honestly say no. There were a couple other things that were worse than this. And one that was worse than this is related to COVID-19. And that is that you know you're you're talking week to week after um, the shutdown on March 16th. You're talking about what the library staff is going to be doing, and then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, all that talk gets pushed aside in the in the form of a layoff. Mm -hmm. And personally, that equals anything that could ever happen to you is if your library has been saved from a layoff, count yourself as very fortunate and that your advocacy has had a part in. I don't think there's any book on advocacy that can stop a steamroller. Mm. And that has been what has happened. However, on May 26, we got most of our staff back. We did it Good. through a lot of scrutiny 
that we had never had before, strangely mm -hmm. enough. You know, for a hundred and some odd years, we've been of value to everyone in the community, and we still are. We just need to prove our value in ways that we've never done before to um, to those who make decisions. But we were able to make those uh, pleas on May 26. We got um, most of our staff recalled, and that was the day we started doing um, the book drop. I think that was the day on, or it was close to that. Day. It was, yeah, it was June 1st, I think, just a couple of days after they came back. Yeah. Um, June 3rd, we started the uh, curbside service. Um, we're starting today after a couple of days of a soft unannounced opening. We're starting our uh, open hours. We're going to be open 46 hours a week as opposed to at one time we were open 70 hours. And then over the past decade, things have kind of whittled down as far as both parks department and the library in, you know, with the great recession and other things. So uh, we're, we're down quite a bit on our hours, just like you are, Cecilia. July 6, that's the day that the governor has decided Grand Island and Hall County go to phase three. We're currently on phase two, but we're already decided we are not going to change our operations. After being open less than one week, we're not going to change our operations again. We'll be open limited hours, limited services until we, um, I like to say, you know, uh, get our feet under us figure out how the community is responding to us and how our, our staff are able to uh, get services out uh, since we still don't have all, all of our staff members back. Mm -hmm. During that time, both um, Sean, who is our adult services librarian, but especially Celine, have been doing the operational elements. We've all been doing a lot of reading, all been doing a lot of listening and uh, Celine is making sure that it gets put into practice. Celine, over to you. All right. Well, um, when we just had our small group of staff here, um, we learned a lot and we did watch a lot of webinars. And I think our our weekly meeting with Denise was kind of like that was my favorite one to be able to listen to what other libraries are doing, get some some ideas from Cecilia, a lot of ideas and other li other libraries. And uh, we learned some new things about how we do library programming and how we get our information out. And I think um, our social media went from uh, Sean and I scraping some things together to um, having one of our staff members almost do it full time. So um, getting the word out, letting people know what's going on, um, either on our website, Facebook, um, Instagram, or through um, public service announcements um, and our library columns, um, people really appreciate knowing what's going on. And so, um, you know, we've uh, we've made signs. We've used our makerspace equipment to uh, do a lot of promotions with also within the library. Um, we made some round circles at you know six feet, and we, we've just been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And uh, having fewer staff members, you know, everybody's always busy. Um, I made a really simple schedule for when we uh, weren't open to the public of uh, people being assigned either at curbside pulling books, uh, doing virtual programming. Everybody had things to do. And I think um, it really shows not only me, but our um, our city administration, how valuable the library is. And I think Steve was right. You know, we really have to, sh to do some advocacy for, for libraries right now and, and make sure that we're promoting our, our libraries. And, um, you know, I know essential services are important, but I, I, it kind of made me feel really bad in all the years I've been here that the library wasn't as important, be, you know, life and death and, and libraries, but still very, very important to people. Um, people that are coming in today are so thankful. Everyone says, oh, thank you. We missed you. Uh, I've had some people say um, thank you for having 
you know, for letting us wear masks. And some people said, I don't want to wear a mask. And so, you know, we've got a big division there with that. But um, we've had a lot of people come in today, a lot of families. Um, I was surprised to see as many families and kids as I did today. And, um, you know, the first hour we set aside for, for seniors and for the uh, people that might have health concerns. But we had a lot of people when we opened the door. There was, uh, I'd say, probably like maybe 12 people out there right when we opened. So I think we're going to be busy. And I think, you know, we're like uh, it was mentioned that we're at a little bit of a different spot because Cecilia, when you opened, it was a scarier time. And I think people are a lot more comfortable. And so I know I've kind of rambled, but I just wanted to cover everything in one broad, oh, broad thing. But OK, that's all I have. I do want to add that um, I have another um, camera up on my computer, and it shows that so far we've had uh, we've had 50 people enter the building, not um, not definitely what would normally happen, and 47 people leave the building, so people are coming and going and coming and going very regularly. Looks like um, now we have more people leaving than entered which is an anomaly, but um, <laughs> good as to get. Um, we, is it a lot of it, I think they're just um, get in and out quickly. I mean, that's what I do like when I've had to, I mean, I'm mostly like with getting groceries, I'm doing a lot, pick up mostly, every now and then I have to run in for something and it is a, where do is it, where do I get it, get in, get out, get away from the other people. <laughs> that is definitely the, the truth. We are, um, we're, we're billed as a community center. We have so many, community center services that we're not providing. Uh, I like to say they're taking a back seat right now. Um, and partially it's because we've taken almost every seat out of the public um, areas so that people do. They come in, they get their materials, they leave, they don't use the children's discovery area, which is just an absolute um, wonderful um, children's museum-like atmosphere, but we're, we're uh, spending a lot of time uh, sanitizing high touch areas. And so, and at this time, the difference between uh, Cecilia's operation and ours is we don't have the track record that shows, and our community is still, it was a hot spot. Um, it was hot. <laughs> uh, very, very hot. And very so hot. we're still, experiencing a downward trend. I think that overall, um, Cecilia is at a good point where she's able to relax some of those uh, restrictions. Um, we decided not to have magazine, not to have newspapers out to the public right now. Cecilia, you, you had that restriction and you've lifted that restriction. So you're, you're at a good point. Someday we'll get to that point, and when that day comes, then um, we're going to be as careful as possible, like every other library, to make sure we're not adding to the spread of COVID-19. That's a good comment. Yeah, that's a good thing to think about. It isn't just about how when we get our services back out there. It's make sure that, and someone mentioned that, oh, someone wrote that in a grant application that we just received here. We want to make sure that there is zero is the um, any if COVID is not at all we're not one of the hot spots that they say oh like you know, we're having we're hearing about because people <laughs> went to that beach or went to that bar or went to that event that was a hot thing we want to make sure that that never is our library is the reason for any of those spreads. Yep. All right, so we do have comments and questions coming in here that I'll get to. Um, we uh, it's. Almost 11 o'clock, getting up close there. We started a little after um, 10. Uh, we will go as long as it takes for everyone to have your questions answered, discussions, anything you guys want to say. We don't have to stop right at 11 um, o'clock for this or anything. So please do type in your questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, whatever. Um, first, um, Gail Roberts says, congrats on the retirement, Steve. We all miss you, of course. <laughs> well, not quite yet, but I'm, I'm negotiating that right now. Yes. It was, it was kind of funny because in, I, a few couple of months back, I'd say, Steve, don't you wish you had retired? And he's like, no. And then one day he walked by and I think he said, oh, I think I kind of wished I'd retired. 
just one time he said it. <laughs> one low point one low point one low day yep <laughs> Um, but a question she has, which I'm not sure if any of us have the answer. I've been trying to see if I can find anything about this, and it's something I'm sure everybody was talking about um, as things shut down. He's trying to provide services, like the videos and things you were talking, having had on your Facebook page there, um, Cecilia. Um, so online story times is a concern for for her. She says publishers and authors were lax until she thinks August 30th. You know, a lot of them did say like Penguin, and, and you know, there's announcements saying don't worry about copyright go ahead and put everything out there that you want to do your readings do your story times um uh, you know because of the situation but after that can what happens after that can we still call reading a book online fair use or do we need to start obtaining permissions what's does anybody have any idea about what the situation is um uh, for that i think it, it's unfortunately it's publisher by publisher making the announcements in the past, you know, it, previously as well, um, to begin with, that it's going to depend on, there's just no, right now, overreaching re regulation or law that says, here's how it works. Each publisher had to say, yes, we will allow this, or no, we won't. Um, I know on our page, we had some links to some information. Um, yeah, here. Um, so for librarians looking for information, Library Journal offers temporary free access to all their content. That's for us, like doing our jobs. Um, remote teaching research. So uh, does anybody have any ideas or know what is, has any, anybody heard anything been said from Penguin or anyone about what happens after? We haven't gotten to that point yet, but. I, sure. I don't. I, oh, go on ahead. I think I don't think they've made made any decisions yet, and I think they're kind of waiting to see what the schools are going to do because a lot of the schools, um, like Omaha, they're doing that three two where they're going to have kids there like every other day, and um, mm -hmm. so if they, I bet they'll be supportive again of uh, the copyright. But I know I read up on everything before we started doing our virtual programs, and it seemed like everybody was pretty, you know, free and. Okay. giving us the rights the publishers are being very supportive of the situation um which is great coming from them <laughs> i'll just do yes. that um <laughs> and hopefully they will continue i mean this is you know something new for everybody and they want to be supportive of kids and children and school um and i think that yeah I, I was talking about how what schools are doing that is different all across the country too mm -hmm. i'm just starting to hear i saw something i don't remember where saying Oh, our our school said so they're just going to open up like normal in in mm -hmm. September, August, whatever. Everybody comes back, no special case, no, no special anything. Okay, and then we have some that are doing yes, some coming back, some uh, um, partially. Uh, some universities are doing. We're going to be remote completely starting September. We just can't even think about bringing all these college students back from across the country. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go to a different state, you need to. Um, be quarantined for 14 days because you came from somewhere else you can't just can't be doing that um so i think right now unfortunately gail uh who asked the question um we don't know yet um but keep an eye on the different publishers and see what if ala imls oclc reports on what um they're doing well i i will keep on following national and regional trends I hope that this is one trend that goes national, the American Library Association. Um, there are others that can forge new alliances. Um, there were uh, several attempts uh, when we had the, the conflict over uh, eBooks and mm -hmm. uh, didn't always work out, but there were some alliances that, that did work out. And in this case, I think it would be a real good feel good Say that three times. Real good, feel good <laughs> for libraries and publishers to have um, little kids happy for the next. Yeah. You want those kids to have good thoughts about you for when they grow up. <laughs> They'll remember. Um, another question, which is specific to us here in Nebraska, I think. Um, Beth Fell is asking, at, at this time, is there a direct order for when we have to resume regular operations with no restrictions? Um, I would refer you to um, the Nebraska Directed Health Measures is what comes from 
Department of Health and Human Services of the different guidelines and the different phases uh, for what it is in different agency here it depends on your county, of course, and for what they're talking about. But there is also directed health measures measures from counties themselves and for your municipality potentially, like what Cecilia dealt with, where her city administrator says, "Open up." Um, yeah, the governor think, says there is no date for phase four. Um, I think at some point it'll get introduced for what phase four is. Yeah. Which for us is just continued modifications and and more looser um, guidelines and looser restrictions. But um, we're pretty close to where we're going to be for quite some time, I think. Um, our new normal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And you see here, they even have on the state's page links to the specific counties of their own health measures. So um, check your county and see what they're saying um, for your area. If you're not in Nebraska, well, pick your state. <laughs> and I think um, part of the question is too, is are we going to be forced to open? Because I have small libraries that are asking me that too, is okay, so we're right now we're closed and we're doing curbside delivery, we're letting people pick stuff up, we'll take an appointment now and again, but do we really, are we, is there a day that they're gonna say you have to be open? And I think that goes back to your library board and your municipality more than, the state tells us how much closed down we have to be and the health measures but I'm not sure anybody except your own governing agencies will tell you when you have to be open. Here in Nebraska, that's the way it is, yes. Um, and that's what's interesting about these health measures says, it, if you read through them, it says bars and restaurants can do this now, can do this now, can do this. No, um, it doesn't come down in Nebraska, and I gotta be specific about this. There isn't a, you have to do this um, in some of those cases. Because I do know that in other states, the situation is different for libraries. Um, and I, will, I can't say this with the state it is because I don't want to get it wrong, but I know there was one state where it is actually the state, li the state library, which is like us, the library commission, does is in charge of what libraries do and did dictate to the libraries. We are telling you you're closing as of today, as of whatever date we're telling you, and we will tell you when you open up. That's just the way their um, statutes and their you know um, government works. Uh, so check your own state for what they what theirs are. But here in Nebraska, it's exactly what Denise said. The, it's you have the directed health measures telling you what you can do, and then in each of your own situation, talk to your board, talk to your your municipality, and figure out um, how you do it in your town. It's just my guess that I think there may be um, a first phase to phase four, where um, I think personally, I think social distancing and um, other elements could be part of um, America's regimen for quite a while. Oh yeah. In the meantime, getting um, restaurants to 100% capacity mm -hmm. is uh, something that's on a lot of people's minds um, and businesses to 100% capacity. And they'll work out their own uh, regimen for that. And I think they need phase four for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So. There's two different things going on here. And in neither case do, and, and maybe that's a good thing, in neither case um, have decision makers been thinking, well, what's gonna be the best thing for libraries? Should they go to phase three so libraries can have more open? Um, it's it's so, not really at the, at the top of their yeah, thinking. <laughs> Well, yeah, and their libraries are only specifically mentioned in the gatherings part. Nowhere else, so we're borrowing a little bit from the bars and a little bit from the tattoo parlors and, you know, there's that in the CDC guidelines that I was looking for. Well, where's the park? There's all really specific things. Where's the library one? There so is. We may not have seats, but we do have some stand-up areas. And so someday if you come in here and people are, are drinking a cocktail, don't be surprised. <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do to get your budget. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, let's see what we have here. Anybody else have any questions, comments, thoughts? I had one thing. I know um, Cecilia mentioned the making your own wipes and we've had our custodians um, 
they take some microfiber towels and they prepare the towels for the staff in the morning so they're wet so we use those to wipe down the books they have mm -hmm. something on that would kill any any um, germs and stuff we wear gloves and we mm -hmm. wipe everything off um, we we did get our hands on a few of our Lysol wipe Clorox wipes but um, so we've been using the that and then they take and take them to a commercial place and wash them nice. so um, we use mm -hmm. those to uh, wipe down our keyboards we have them covered with a uh, we ordered these little covers that they use in hospitals. And so um, after people use the computers, we wipe those off. So we're staffing we their own there. areas and then the custodians hit all the high touch areas for us in the restrooms. I think we found um, after the first batch was made that maybe we were a little too zealous. Uh, <laughs> we, we made too much up in advance and wow. after a while they get a little musty. Oh yeah. You have and, to find the balance. There's a balance. Yeah. So yeah, you want to be prepared. Well, that's like what you said, Cecilia. You bought how many gallons of? <laughs> uh, yeah, four gallons of this cavicide. You know, it's only on one. <laughs> it's just such a um, light dusting. It's only used on that particular purpose, but we could use it as a general disinfectant. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So Bath and Imperial says they're open with restrictions. They've been open with restrictions since June fifteenth. Um, and uh, Roselle and Chadron says they're using ultraviolet lights for keyboards to help with that too. That's another thing I know that's been um, suggested that, that can help. I will say we we tested the uh, wrap, the the press and seal, and I, heard, I was going to say yeah, cling wrap. I've heard people <laughs> library. Okay, the press and seal I will tell you leaves a residue. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, we left it on for three days and then we and this was just in a staff office and peeled it off and granted you wouldn't be leaving it on that long probably in a public setting but <laughs> we were testing it and my staff she was just absolutely miserable because it took her a long time to get it, <laughs> get it off <laughs> not yeah. that's not the main use for that yeah unfortunately <laughs> Um, Rosella says yes yeah, Steve you were doing the thing yeah Rosella says yes they are wands they have one ultraviolet light wands so okay. that's Rosella and Chadron if anyone's interested and want to know more about what she's doing there yeah. hmm. cool there's lots of things and that's the thing too about this uh, and I know people there have discussions uh, strong opinions on this don't we don't know a lot even the cdc world health organization the experts do not know a lot enough about COVID 19 yet really they're still studying it and what does work on it or doesn't work on it may change day to day um and they may discover tomorrow the thing that really kills it or they may discover oh what we told you we thought or didn't sorry we, we did more testing <laughs> that's how science works you test you investigate you make new decisions new um you know have new results and change your your decisions on what um, actually works and doesn't work. So it's something that's so new we just don't know. But I think if you just do the things that work that you know can have some effect, and if they're not like damaging, like don't mo microwave your books, <laughs> um, that it doesn't hurt to do these things to at least keep everyone healthy. And it's just you know for germs in general. I mean I know I worked in the university library where. Um, who have had keyboard coverage for years. It's not it's not something brand new just this mm -hmm. last few months. There's some places that have been doing that for a long time because during flu season or just the, the students coming back to college from across the country and the staff are like, I don't want to touch the stuff that these kids are touching and as you can see, sneezing yeah. on. So they have keyboard covers already. So um, in some cases it's things we're doing, yeah. And we do get a lot of calls for, to use our meeting rooms and the AARP. Everybody kind of wants everything just to return like instantaneously, you know. And so, you know, yeah. most yeah. people are pretty understanding about um, Steve's new motto. We we had our morning meeting was at this time. So we're all kind of remembering exactly. if we deal with someone, you know, like you can't argue with a lot of people. So we just at this time, you know, I was like, I like that. That's a great line to use always turn it into uh thanks for that idea at yes. this time yeah. yeah i think i think so your wording has a lot to that idea yeah we're going to make you a shirt that says at this time and then on the back <laughs> we'll put retirement when you decide 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah. I do. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, because then you, at least you give them, you don't shut them down completely. You say, with what we know right now, at this, and it gives it an open ended as things may change tomorrow. And don't be mad at us when we change. Today we told you one thing, tomorrow we told you something different because things, things change. change. And we learn new things that we need to base our decision making on about how many people should be in a room together, how safe is it for everyone. I want to add, every one of you out there could be a presenter uh, today or any other time, whether it's to your city council or your library board or your community or the state mm -hmm. or whatever. You're going through something that a lot of people um, will consider valuable learning experience mm -hmm. when you have grandkids. So. <laughs> You'll be able to not only say you went through COVID-19, but that you were in charge of something that held together and held our community together at a very crucial time. And we were the ones that showed people right ways to do things and um, inclusive ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, that is share your experience. You, you're going to be the experts on this that in the future document everything you're doing and put it into your strategic plan put it into the disaster planning part of your <laughs> take uh, pictures be sure to take pictures oh, we've yes. done every phase we've taken pictures Absolutely. of what it looks like to to document it because it 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 does change mm -hmm. i think it's changing so much yeah all right, so it's about 11.15, I think. Uh, maybe we wrap things up. Anybody have any last-minute desperate questions you want to ask or anything you want to share? Get it typed into the question mm -hmm. section. Um, Denise, Cecilia, Steve, Celine, anything last you want to say? I think, Steve, that was a great little final word you had there. But I would, I, I would say um, listen to your patrons. If they uh, post something on your social media, like yeah. if somebody's not understanding something, listen to what they're saying because that means something needs to be changed somewhere you know so everybody gets it and, and don't make rules for the few people who are very vocal about their personal opinions whether that's mask shaming you know if i you know your policies need to be for the majority of your patrons not the few people who are causing you a thorn in your side um that's what you do every day with exactly um, yeah how you it's this is different a new situation but it is very similar to some of these con confrontations you've had in the past and you know how to work to deal with that you've done it before yeah watch for people that might like employees that maybe might be a little apprehensive or maybe need some counseling or mm -hmm. you know, we've had a couple i think um where we've talk to them or they've made some changes because they knew they were really you know in troubled waters so to speak so watch for I think that something that a lot of places are not thinking about as much is the mental health issue that we talked about earlier that you know when this all started oh my gosh what's happening i'm stressed out but now months later it doesn't mean we're okay with it yet you can st it's 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 actually for me i know weighing on us even more that it's still a problem, still happening. Things are not going to go back to normal anytime soon. Um, and, and how do I, you know, deal with that now? That it's not oh this new crazy thing that's happening, but now it's this ongoing thing, and that's a whole different mindset to try and deal with. So um, mental health support is going to be something to on ongoing, definitely. Yep. Beth loves your at this time. I think she's going to steal it, Steve. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's time Thank you. We have 61 people in the building and 61 people out of the building. So I can let <laughs> At this time. <laughs> You're in a balance. <laughs> I told the staff if they couldn't remember, just think upon once upon a time. Once okay, at this time. That's how I remember it. <laughs> I will absolutely, yes. We'll hear all the libraries across Nebraska saying this now. <laughs> we support it, absolutely. That's right. It's our new motto. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here with us. Um, Denise, Cecilia, Steve, and Celine, this was, this was great. I'm glad you're all available to join us today um, to talk about this. This is definitely something on everyone's mind. Um, we'll, we'll see how things go. Um, uh, Steve and Celine, good luck today. <laughs> um, hopefully things stay um, uneventful for you <laughs> as much as they can be. And um, yeah, so um, as I said, keep an eye on our pandemic page here on the Library Commission. Um, Denise, I know you're going to keep having your weekly Zoom calls. We are set up for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah, all right. And everybody's um, welcome. You don't have to be from Central Plains. That's what I was going to say. I was wondering, yeah, because I know, um, I think Three Rivers Library System had had been previously had done some regular online uh, communi communications type discussions on Zoom. Um, with things going on how they are now, I don't know what's going on with that right away. But yeah, this is something that's open to everybody. Look onto the um, three, uh, Central Plains info um, here in Nebraska if you are, and you know, join your colleagues with um, to discussing what everybody is doing. I know Celine, sent, Celine, Denise sends out that information onto the mailing lists here in Nebraska for everybody, so that you know where to log into for it. Oh, oh, sorry, there, right, Tammy, there you are. Okay, yeah, Tammy is the director of our Three Rivers. Yes, they are still doing their weekly ones as well for Three Rivers Library System. So check out Three Rivers as well to, to join into theirs. Um, as I know Tammy had started these last year, the, a few years ago, they started doing regular meetings of their directors just to talk about things. Um, but she's there doing theirs weekly as well. Awesome. All right, so uh, thank you everyone for being here with me. Thank you everyone for attending. I think that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I'm gonna go back to our Encompass Live webpage here and show you, I mentioned we are recording and we are, and the archive will be up by the end of this week in our archive section that's right here underneath our upcoming shows. Most recent one goes to the top of the page. Um, I will have a link to the recording on here. Um, we have links, uh, to the Realm Project and our pandemic page and the resources from um, Steve and Cecilia are on there. So you can, um, I'll link to that maybe so that you'll have a quick link from the recording there. Um, but it will be on here. I'll let everyone know when it is ready. Like I said, by the end of this week, although Friday's a holiday, so I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> that's, I, I, that's, the, that's what I'll say. Um, I'll show you while you're here, you can search our full archives if you want to for any of the topics, we, anything we've had on the show. Uh, you'll notice there is a limit to do it for the most recent 12 months if you want to only. Um, just find something really current. That is because uh, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009 and our full archive, I'm not going to scroll all the way down because <laughs> our full archives are here going back to the very beginning. So. If you do search the whole archives, just pay attention to the original broadcast date so that you know that's when that was actually talked about. Um, certain uh, presentations will stand the test of time, um, like this one that I just randomly clicked on, weeding your library collection, always important. But some things may become outdated. Services and products might not exist anymore. Links might no longer be any good. Um, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date when you do watch something that is older on our archives here. Um, we do have a Facebook page for, there it is, Encompass Live, <laughs> find the right tab. Um, so if you do like to use Facebook to keep up on things, give us a like over there. I post some reminders of, um, of shows when they're available and when the recordings are up. Here's a reminder to log into this morning's show. Um, information about our presenters. Scroll, come on. Um, so keep an, if you do like to use Facebook, if you are still someone on there, um, give us a like over there. We also use on Twitter, we have a little hashtag we made up for Encompass Live, Encump Live, as a little abbreviation there. So if you search for that hashtag on Twitter or other social media, you'll find other things elsewhere about Encompass Live. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. I hope you join us next week. Here's our schedule coming up for July. I also have a couple of things coming up in August that I'm conf I got confirmed. So you'll see those um, uh, sessions um, getting added to the calendar soon. Next week, we're talking about Python, not snakes. <laughs> I don't, I'm a, I hate snakes. That's not a, I, I have a, that's one of my phobias. <laughs> but snakes, Python as in computer program. <laughs> Um, here's what Python does for us. What can it do for your library? Catherine Frazier is from North Carolina State University Libraries, and she's done some great things with Python there. And if you are a techie person, or maybe you just want to learn a little something, this would definitely be something for you to um, sign up for and join us for um, that show next week, or any of our other ones we have coming up on the schedule. So thank you everybody for being here. 
Thank you, Denise, Celia, Steve, Celine, and we'll see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs>